Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to solve problem 16 of chapter 7. Determine the internal normal force, shear force and moment at point C of the beam. Before we find the internal loadings, we need to draw the free body diagram for the entire beam and find the reaction forces. So our first step is to find the reaction forces. We have two reactions at A, AX and AY. At B is a roller, so we have reactions only in Y direction. We have trapezoidal distributed loading, but we can break it into a rectangle with a resultant force FR because it's a uniform, so it's acting in the middle of the beam with 1.5 meter from each, with 3 meter from each side. I'm going to call it FR1. That would be the result of this rectangular loading. So the magnitude for FR1 would be 200 times the length. So 1200 Newton. And then we have this triangle on the top. I'm going to call it FR2, the resultant force 2. What's the magnitude here is 200. So 200 times the length 6, but here because it's a triangle, we divide it by 2. So that would be 600 nit. And when would, what would be the location that FR2 is acting? Is one third from the right side or the right uh, angle. So our FR2. would be one third of six meters, so two meter. So here this distance would be two meter. So now that we have the magnitude and the location of our distributed loading, we can find the reaction forces. So summation of forces in X equals zero, that gives us that AX would be zero. Summation of moment about point A, so I can get rid of my AY and I can find BY. I have my resultant force FR1 is creating a negative moment, FR2 is also creating a negative moment, FR1 is 1200, moment arm is 3, the second resultant force magnitude is 600, the moment arm is 4, BY is the only force that is creating a positive moment, and the moment arm is 6, so I only have one unknown, I find BY to be 1000 newton or 1 kilonewton. Now that I have BY, if I write summation of forces in Y direction, I have AY, the two resultant force are acting in the negative Y direction, and I found BY, so it would be 1000 equals zero, and AOI, 800 newton. And because the problem doesn't have X and Y coordinate, we must draw an XY coordinate so we know what we are talking when we are saying positive X or positive Y. So now that I found the reaction forces, I can make a section cut and find the internal loading that is happening at C. When you are making a section cut, then you could have a choice of whether considering the right side or the left side. So here I'm going to draw the free body diagram for the left side and solve my problem. So free body diagram of the left side. Here I have my beam. I found the value for AX and AY. AX was 0, AY was 800 Newton. And here you need to be careful. You need to draw the distributed loading. Because now for this segment, we have a different resultant force. We cannot trust or use the resultant force that we had, we found for the entire beam. Now it's a segment of the beam. The internal loading that we have, we don't know the directions, so we are going to assume positive directions, and C, V, C, and M. Positive for normal force is when it's intention for the shear force to create a member, to cause the member to rotate clockwise, and for the moment is to create a positive curvature. 
So in this distributed loading that I have, here is 200 Newton meter. This distance is three meter. What would be W here? If you look at the problem, you can see at this point, W is, is half bay, is, so it should be 300, 300 Newton meter. Or you could use similar triangle rule to find what would be the value at any location. So for us, W is 300. Now I have to find a resultant force for this distributed loading. So here I'm gonna draw another freeway diagram, this time with the magnitude of the resultant force. So I have 800 Newton here. So again, because it's a trapezoidal distributed loading, I'm gonna break it into two. I call it FR1. which is acting in the middle. Here, the middle of three meter is 1.5 meter. We are just doing, writing it for a segment of our beam. And the magnitude, I have 200 times three, that would be 600 Newton. And I have another FR2, which is for this triangle. So if W is 300, then this distance here would be 100 Newton meter. So would be 100, the length is three because it's a triangle I divided by two, so 150 Newton. And it's acting one third from the right side, so FR2, one third would be one meter here. And then similarly, I have my NC, VC, and M. Now I can write my equilibrium equation and solve for the unknown. The simplest one would be summation of forces in X. Now I'm writing the equilibrium equation for this three by diagram. Summation of forces in X gives me NC equals zero. I don't have any normal force. There is no forces in X direction. Summation of forces in Y equals zero. I have 800 Newton. Then my FR1 and FR2, both of them are in the opposite of Y direction, negative 600, negative 150. And then I have VC, the shear force equals zero. So VC would be 50 Newton. So I found the second internal loading. Now the last one would be our moment. I can write a summation of moment about this point, which is point C. So I can get rid of VC and then find the only unknown, which is MC. So summation of moment about point C equals zero, counterclockwise to be positive. MC is already counterclockwise. That's the moment at point C. So, and then we ha I have the 500 Newton is creating a counterclockwise, so it's positive. 600 Newton is creating a counterclockwise, it's positive. You can see when we are writing about point C, our internal, our resultant forces of distributed loading are creating a counterclockwise, so they are positive. When uh, we were finding uh, the reaction forces, those forces, we were finding it about point A, and they were creating a clockwise. So they were negative. So depending on the point that we are writing our moment, the forces can create clockwise or counterclockwise moment. And I'm, I have 800 Newton equals zero. Yeah, yeah, everything equals zero. Then MC, I get a positive value, which means that the direction for the moment that we assumed is correct. So we can find our three internal loading. So the trick of the problem is that for distributed loading, when you are making a section cut, you have to use the entire distributed loading and find new resultant force. You cannot use the resultant force that you found previously because those resultant forces were developed based on the entire beam. Now we are only finding uh, for a segment of a beam and only writing our equilibrium for the left side. If you do for the right side, you will get the same answer.